set your spirit free just follow your intuition loosen up take a breath do what you gotta do and meditate on that baby Honorable ministers, members of the diplomatic corps, uh, members of Congress, distinguished past and present honorees, Caribbean family and friends, greetings and salutations. For the past 11 years, uh, ICS has been hosting on the day of the Caribbean American Heritage Awards Gala, the Invest Caribbean Leadership Dialogue. And this year we had our 11th uh, Invest Caribbean Leadership Dialogue. We had a focus this year on emerging opportunities in a lean economy. And we were really very grateful to have had the presence of the World Bank, the Exim Bank, the investment promotions of Nevis. Uh, we had an energy session, energy and infrastructure, that brought together a number of energy companies that are doing business in the United States and in the Caribbean, focusing primarily on renewable energy. And then we brought together OPIC, the US Exim Bank, the US Trade and Development Agency, as well as Whitestone Group to speak about financing the deal because once you have some great projects, we need to know where to find the money to finance the deal. Our luncheon speaker was the Honorable Dwight Cozier who is the Minister of Trade for Nevis. He is also Chairman of the Nevis Promotions Agency. And we had anchoring our sessions um, His Excellency uh, Ambassador Caron from Guyana, um, Her Excellency um, Glenda Morian Phillips from Trinidad and Tobago, and uh, the father of ICS, uh, His Excellency Dr. Isben Williams. At this point, I'd like to bring up uh, Honorable Dwight Cozier, who is the Minister of Trade from Nevis to bring you greetings on behalf of their government. Good evening. On behalf of my Premier, the Honorable Joseph Walcott Parry and the people of Nevis, I want to bring greetings to you this evening, and I want to also take the time to congratulate the awardees as at this, the 16th annual Caribbean American Heritage Awards Gala. I also want to commend the Institute of Caribbean Studies for launching this very auspicious body, a body which, in my view, promotes Caribbean integration and celebrates the tapestry that binds us as a Caribbean people in the diaspora. I am from the island of Nevis, which is just a short distance from Washington, D.C., and so I want to extend my warm invitation to you all to visit the island of Nevis. It is accessible directly from the JFK airport in New York, direct flights to St. Kitts, and then it's a short ferry ride, a very short and scenic ferry ride over to the island of Nevis. Nevis as an island boasts a population of some 12,000 people. We are small, but we are dynamic. And I was, I was very happy 
to be able to represent Nevis as the Minister in Charge of Trade and Industry in the conference today, bringing together both Caribbean entrepreneurs and investors from the United States as well as financiers. I am proud to be here this evening and I want to say to you that the island of Nevis is part of a Caribbean community that has received the advancement of the Caribbean people like you because of your endeavors and your pursuit in, in business. I want to urge you, therefore, to continue the thrust, the integration thrust, not only here in, in Washington, D.C., but I want you to take the opportunity to dis rediscover the islands of the Caribbean and the small islands like ours. And so, in ending, I want to, to invite you to research the island of Nevis, know what we have to offer. We just, for instance, found a geothermal energy resource in Nevis, which has placed Nevis on the map. And it's, it's not too difficult to find out about it. Just Google Nevis geothermal. And that is, is, uh, opens an investment opportunity for investors here in the United States. Um, also, investors amongst the Caribbean diaspora who would be interested in finding out about our beloved island. I want to say good evening to you and enjoy as I have enjoyed so far. Thank you. The census has taken center stage in the Caribbean community. In June, the Census Bureau named President of ICS, Claire Nelson, National Profile Partner for Census 2010. It's been the goal of ICS to record and celebrate Caribbean American achievement, but sometimes it takes considerable research to identify those Caribbean Americans. Census 2010 will forever change this landscape, giving people a chance to proudly record their heritage. We are going to begin with the students. Today we have the ICS Student Leadership Project led by Shauna Myers and Gabriel Martino to unveil ICS's program to educate and galvanize students. Ladies and gentlemen, Shauna Myers and Gabriel Martino. Good evening, dignitaries, honorees, special guests, Ladies and gentlemen, the, Caribbean, the Institute of Caribbean Studies has signed on to be chair of the National Caribbean American Complete Census Count and to be a national profile partner. This is also why ICS has created a Caribbean Student Leadership Project, the National Caribbean Student Leadership Project indeed, and why we have decided to take on the leadership. We know we count, but we want to know by how much we count. We aim to do this through various initiatives geared towards ensuring the very Caribbean students in colleges across the America become aware of the importance of the census and become active participants in Census 2010. We will obtain our goals through three ways. For Black History Month 2010, we encourage Caribbean students associations across the country to engage their members in Black 2.0 Symposium, which will explore the historical contributions of Caribbean Americans to the United States. Also, in March of 2009, we will generate a national Text Your Cousin Day. This initiative aims to generate national interaction amongst Caribbean American families by charging Caribbean American students with the task of encouraging members of their families to be counted. 
During Caribbean American Heritage Month 2010, we will, con we will be conducting a, a Caribbean American Story Video Festival. Caribbean American students are encouraged to share their stories of being raised in the Caribbean or being raised by Caribbean parents. We recognize that each person and every voice counts and that it is only through our efforts that real change will occur. With these efforts, we hope that more Caribbean Americans will get involved with U.S. Census 2010. Our success will be aided by the skilled guidance of Mr. Arnold Jackson. His outstanding credentials can only be lauded. We are pleased with the commitment of Mr. Jackson and the Census of 2010 to working with ICS. We hope that this affiliation will generate future partnerships. Please join us in welcoming Mr. Arnold Jackson. I bring you greetings from the Department of Commerce, our Secretary Gary Locke, from the Bureau of the Census, our Director Bob Groves. My special thanks and uh, regards to the honorees tonight. Uh, your achievements speak for themselves. We're here because our goal for 2010 is to make sure everyone is counted. We have a saying that uh, we're going to paint a new portrait of America. And that new portrait will be incomplete without Caribbean Americans. So we're here because we want you to be counted. And we want you to help us ensure that the Caribbean community is represented by a full count in 2010. I'd like to extend to you the challenge to make sure that all Caribbean Americans return the census form when it arrives at the House. A return census form, particularly from the first mailing, is the most efficient way that we can ensure that you're counted and that you are represented. As we proceed from where we are, you can expect to hear an awful lot about the 2010 census. We have a, a fabulous paid advertising program that will premiere in December of this year. That program will encompass over 28 languages. We have a partnership program. We have over 2,900 partnership specialists nationwide, some of whom are here tonight from our local offices, to work with you, to work with organizations like uh, the Institute for Caribbean Studies. As we proceed toward April, we will be spending more and more time ensuring that those who are least likely to be counted are counted. And that's where you come in. We have an advertising program, as I mentioned. We have a partnership program. We have a fabulous program uh, we call Census in Schools. However, a complete count in 2010 will only come about if you and I together carry out the census. We have planned the census now for over eight years. We will spend uh, over $14 billion. However, our theme, it's in our hands, means that at this point in time, it's no longer my census, it's our census. As we go forward, uh, we have to count on you to represent the voices of trust, the authenticity that is necessary to convince those who may have never participated in a census that a census is a great thing to do. That's where partnership comes in, and that's where you have an opportunity. You can work with us. Your organization can become a partner with us. You can speak on behalf of the census. You can ensure your friends, neighbors, and relatives that the census is safe, is simple, is short. We have only 10 questions. It should take only about 10 minutes. The information is not shared with anyone. And oh, by the way, it's used for a couple of pretty important purposes. First, for our political representation, as you know, apportionment, and for the distribution of over $4 billion, $400 billion a year for the next 10 years. The way your community gets its proper share of both the political representation and the financial resources for programs like health care transportation and education is through a complete count. So we want a complete count. We need a complete count. We want to paint the correct picture of this country. And we think that Caribbean Americans 
belong in that picture. We're counting on you to make that happen. Let me say again, uh, it's a very special pleasure to be here. I've met some of you. I'd like to meet more. Uh, we are just excited to work with you going forward in 2010. And I really, really uh, hope that you will tell everybody, please participate. Please return the census form. Be a part of this. It really is in all of our hands. So I thank you and have a wonderful evening. As many of you know, the statistics on youth at risk in the Caribbean are sobering. According to the World Bank, youth homicide rates in the Caribbean are significantly above the world average. This affects important industries, of course, including the tourism sector, which is the lifeblood of the Caribbean. The perception of crime has turned some hotels into all-inclusive gated enclaves and severely undercut the full destination experience and the incomes of local communities. What if we could support and nurture 100 young entrepreneurs in the Caribbean? May I have your attention, please? What would it look like to support 100 young entrepreneurs in the Caribbean? What it would look like is ICS's newest pilot project called Life Seed, Life Skills Empowerment and Entrepreneurial Development. This program seeks to transform the future of the Caribbean by ensuring that young people are able to acquire the crucial skills and resources needed to be self-directed, gainfully employed, and to reach their goals. We firmly believe that the youth have the ability to thrive and to contribute to society if we teach them the importance of hard work, determination, and if we provide them with vital resources. Life Seed's goal is, simply put, to nurture young leaders. Dr. Claire Nelson has coined a new word for them. She is calling them visioners, young leaders who will one day be honored as we honor our awardees here tonight. At your places, at your dinners, you will see a menu of service options, ways in which you can support Life Seed. That menu is on a pledge card. We urge you to look at the pledge card and to fill it out before the evening is over. You are free to leave it on the table. We appreciate your support of Life Seed, and we look forward to telling you more about it and also to bringing to you at future CARA Awards some of the young entrepreneurs from the Caribbean who will benefit from your generosity. Thank you. John? Dr. Claire Nelson the president and founder of ICS and the CARA Awards, created the Institute of Caribbean Studies in 1983 to provide an organizing platform for Caribbean-American policy here in the United States and to engage the Caribbean diaspora in development of our Caribbean home. And from the look of this room, wouldn't you say she's succeeding? From the moment I met this lady from the first time, I knew she was something special. Her commitment rings through in everything she says and everything she does, and she continues to do. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podium, Dr. Claire Nelson, the founder of the Institute of Caribbean Studies. everyone. Howdy. Howdy. Boy, I was going to try to write my auntie today about the census thing. I think I did it on John show, but as I was talking about the census, somebody told me that some people really don't want to be counted. And I said, why? He said, because me can have a chance to come America. If me go right team, Say me come from Jamaica. And them know exactly how much of a really there. They now go shot the quota. 
So we have a lot of challenges in terms of making sure we're accounted. But ladies and gentlemen, as I look around, I am must say I feel totally blessed and honored that so many of you continue to believe in this dream called ICS. People like Gabriel Christian and Ian Edwards, who were there from the first meeting I held back in 1993, March, in Robert Walker's office. People like Shirley Nathan Pulliam, who believed in the dream, and Georgia Lane, who said, yes, uh, I'll join your advisory board, the first two people I spoke to. Later on, people like Ambassador Bernal, who said, I'd certainly like to be involved, I support the vision. And of course, people in the host committee, Donnett and Beverly and Yasmin, Faith and Deer and the others, there's so many, who continue to try and encourage their friends to come out and support us. 15 years is a long time. 16 years is in a longer time, but I feel like I've reached that sweet, sweet 16. And all my friends and my volunteers are like, how come she's so calm? She no blow up on us today at all. What going on? And I like to think is, yes, because I've reached sweet 16, and I know that the best is yet to come. This year, for example, we're joined by Tracy Austin, who has volunteered to be our new development director. You met her earlier. We're also joined by a Victor Cummins from Jamaica, who went online, I met him once, just briefly talking, went online, saw what we were about, and has basically signed on to join us next year, moving back from Jamaica to join us to help us take ISIS to the next level. I thank him for his belief in the vision. And of course, Others of you, especially our sponsors, and I want to repeat that, people like Aubrey Stevenson and TCB and Chris Gardner and now Birdsmith and Enemy, who year after year, despite the difficulties and the challenges, support us in making this room look the way it is. Give them a hand, please. I know some people say 100 does a lot of money, but not in Washington it isn't. And I say this to really make the point that sometimes we want beautiful things and beautiful spaces, but we don't want to pay for it. But if we don't demand from ourselves the best, then how can we say we honor the best? And we have the best in George Wiley, named one of the most 100 most influential accountants. We've honored people like FMS, Aubrey Stevenson, who in the past was one of the biggest small businesses here in Washington, D.C. And Shirley Nathan Pulliam, who we honor tonight, her work on healthcare disparity has been resounding around this country. States bring her in all over to give her guidance. Yes, tonight we honor the best. Caribbean American Heritage Awards is a national honor which all our honorees wear proudly because we know and they know that they are standing on the shoulders of giants. Those people who paved the way for them to be where we sit, beginning with Marcus Garvey, who some uh, 80 years ago or 100 years ago led the people in a cavalcade around Madison Square Garden and said, yes, black people, stand up, rise up, we are one. That is the stars that they stand on. So tonight, as we sit here, dress up in our pretty dandan, -dan, <laughs> right? Looking good for kill Mr. Thomas Puss. And yes, on a pretty fit you, on a pretty, on a pretty subtle. I want to let you know that this live seed idea has the idea of being long in coming. And people like Kim Watson, I've been talking on and off. You need to do the nifty thing. I'm on the board, you know. Well, let me tell you. People like Kim Watson, yes, Kim, I'm ready now. You will be asked to serve on the advisory board of Life Seed. And yes, Solange Vivian, Vivian has already agreed that she will serve on the advisory board because you know what? She funds a whole school of young people that she send home things for. I said, Solange, we can't keep on sending home things. We have to help them make their own things. So she is going to be on the advisory board to bring entrepreneurial training to Haiti. And yes, George Wiley has agreed in principle to support Life Seed. So give him a hand. <laughs> My friends, 140,000, almost 500,000 Caribbean youth are unattached. We're talking about 500,000 loaded guns. Let them not point in our direction. We must stop sending home barrels and start sending home dreams and helping to grow those dreams into businesses like the entrepreneurs we honor tonight. 
You heard earlier from a young Jamaican American, Michael Blake at the White House, and there are others like him. Maisha Ward is at USTR, and we have called on her in June, for example. Where she is? Bigger up to her. She's somewhere about the place. We have called on people like them because we know that it's the parenting that helped them be who they are today. Now, some young people in the Caribbean don't have parents, or they have parents, but the parents don't have enough. So we have to be their parents because it takes a village to grow a child. So I want to close by saying once again, thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me the privilege of living my dream, this dream called ICS. I invite you to share this dream with me and help grow it into even bigger, brighter things. Because yes, we can. Well, this is the 16th annual um, Cairo Awards. What does this mean to you? Well. One of the most important things in any development process is to uh, sustain institutions. Uh, civilizations that have been able to sustain institutions are civilizations that uh, prosper, persevere. And so it's, it's, it's with enormous pride that we can still uh, 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 rest firm in that assurance that we, we are here. Uh, and not only are we surviving, but we're striving. We hope that um, soon we can begin to have more of an impact on the ground in the Caribbean through the Live Seeds program, where we will try to peer successful entrepreneurs or folks who have gone ahead with those who are still interested, or those who are just beginning, rather, to have an interest in enterprise and, and affect change on the ground in the Caribbean.